everybody and welcome to the next edition of NPTEL online certification course on microelectronics devices to circuits. We start today's uh, module uh, from the combinational logic design 3. So, we have actually covered two modules of combinational logic design in which we have seen what is the meaning of combinational logic, how can you design a combinational logic from a Boolean expression. We have also seen uh, how does a combinational logic, what are the various parameters for example, power, delay, how they are related to the aspect ratio of the transistors uh, and so on and so forth. So, we have studied two types of styles, one is a complementary style, uh, one is a ratioed logic we have studied and we have seen that uh, complementary style is the most robust style, uh, but the area count is typically high, whereas ratioed logic gives you less more amount of static power dissipation and uh, noise margins are limited. Uh, today we will take up what is known as a pass transistor logic in applied to digital logic design. So, the outline of this module is that we will first look into the pass transistor logic and then look into the VTC and therefore, the voltage swing of the pass transistor logic. So, we will look into the fact that what is a pass transistor and therefore, what is the voltage transfer characteristics then maybe you have a look at differential pass transistor logic. We will look into the properties of uh, differential pass transistor logic and then uh, uh, we will understand these three quantities here which is level restoration, multiple threshold transistor design and transmission gate logic right. And then we will compare pass transistor logic with TG logic which is transmission gate logic. This is also referred to as TG right, transmission gate and then we will recapitulate. So, this is a general uh, uh, outline of the course uh, of the module structure for this particular lecture and we will go step by step and see you how it works out. If you remember now, uh, till now uh, we will first now look into a pass transistor logic. What is a pass transistor? Let me give you a very simple idea what is a pass transistor. A pass transistor is, uh, is something like this that if you have a gate right, you have a gate here and you apply a VDD here, it is a drain side and this is your source side. Now, uh, what you do is that you do not apply any signal on the gate side right, you apply the signal actually on the drain side right and let us suppose you apply a gate voltage which is greater than threshold voltage. Then since this is on right, this will be on, this VDD will be transferred to this particular point and this will be VDD. Obviously, of, of course, there will be a threshold voltage drop here, we will not discuss that point at this stage. But uh, th uh, the name it is pass transistor logic also referred to as PTL pass transistor logic. Uh, it, it, it allows you for this VDD to move forward and apply appear in the source side right. So, this is a basic pass transistor logic basic idea. Now, with this knowledge uh, let me give you an idea about a basic NAND AND gate using pass transistor logic. So, you see here I have got a, a, a one transistor here another transistor is here and we apply uh, the signal B here and we apply a complementary signal B here. We apply a 0 here and we apply the A here. So, whenever my B is high right, whenever my B is high whatever be the value of A appears outside and therefore, safely I can write down F equals to A dot B. Why? Because uh, whatever the value of A will appear at this point. So, if A is equals to 0, F will be equals to 0. If A equals to 1, F will be equals to 1 provided B equals to 1. Now, whenever a B is high or B equals to 1, you ensure that your B complement is basically 0, which meaning that this will be cut off. And therefore, this your, your output will be just latched or barred to this input A here. We have already dealt in your previous turn that if you uh, why if you remember from the, the question which we asked was why NMOS is a very good uh, pull down network candidate whereas PMOS is a very good pull up candidate and we told you that or we discussed that uh, that NMOS is a very good it is a very good uh, uh, it allows you to do a very good passage of 0 whereas PMOS allows you to very good passage of 1. So, NMOS is a very good passing of but a poor but a poor in uh, VDD. Uh, hence, in NMOS based pass transistor the high output is VDD minus VT instead of VD that is what I was saying that if you have got a high 
input transistor in a pass transistor logic the output will appear as VDD minus VT. So, so, so the discussion which was have having here you will have VDD minus VTN here right where VTN is basically the, the, the voltage drop here right. So, whatever the voltage here you get a drop in, in this case right and therefore and, and please understand this, this drop cannot be restored at any point of time right and therefore, uh, there will be a loss of the signal. So, the signal will be the signal will be lost right. So, pass transistor logic has this problem that the signals will be lost. Now, if you look at this again this structure here uh, we have discussed this point that uh, now you see in this whole structure uh, even if you do not give this transistor this transistor you still will have an AND uh, application, but the problem is that uh, there will be a floating node available to you whenever my A is equals to 0 or 1. So, now suppose my a b equals to 1 right and my a equals to 1 then output of course, will be 1 and this will be at high voltage high. Similarly, if a equals to 0 and b equals to 1 output f will be equals to 0 and this will be at low voltage uh, low voltage, but then uh, this will not be connected to any uh, any input and therefore, there will be a problem of floating node right. And that is the reason you always have this transistor uh, with you. I will give an example for example, let us suppose A was equals to suppose B was 0 right. So, B bar will be equals to 1 when B is 0 suppose this transistor would not have been there when B equals to 0 is there. So, when B equals to 0 this will be acting as a floating node you are getting my point. See suppose uh, we, we assume that I um, will just give you a brief insight um, we will say, say B equals to 0 b equals to 0 implies that this transistor is cut off and suppose this transistor would not have been there in the design then this node f would have been a floating node right floating node and all sorts of uh, voltage uh, spikes and everything would have been visible here. So, what people thought or the what, what, what researchers thought was that if you give b equals to 0 then b bar equals to 1 right which implies that this will be on and when this is on this 0 will so your output node will be plugged to 0 which is a low impedance node. So, your output f will be equals to 0 which is a low impedance node. So, your it at, at no point of time uh, this f will be a floating node uh, and therefore, you will you 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 will have no problem related to uh, high uh, distortions. So, so, first thing is this one the second thing is that we discussed with you the voltage here will be equals to V D D minus V T N where V T N is the threshold voltage of this one and this voltage is equals to V D D fine. So, this is the pass transistor basic pass transistor logic application. Now, let us look at uh, the property of voltage swing in a pass transistor logic right. So, we need to also look into the fact that you do have a voltage available with you and that is swinging right and swinging from low to high. So, I have an input. So, my VDD is given on the drain side. I have, let me define this point source to be point x and then of course, I have a static inverter here and I am giving an input here right and there will be a capacitance of course, there will be a capacitance here right and this capacitance will be charged by virtue of the current here. Now, this is the input this black color is my input this black color which you see here is my input. Now, when the when the input was low right when the input, in the, when the input was low right. Uh, let us suppose this was low it means this is cut off once this is cut off the output goes to high. So, output is high now right and now, now the input starts to rise as the input starts to rise uh, look at this red one input starts to rise which means that x now starts to reach towards VDD and that is that is the reason you see the red colored graph here this starts to VDD, but what happens is that beyond a particular time limit this x latches on to only V d d minus V t n. So, the your response is V d d minus V t n. So, if your V t n is approximately say 0 0.7, 0 0.8 you automatically have a lower value of x uh, at this particular point. So, when x is high out will be low at this point, but it can be only low understand it can be only low provided the value of voltage at point x exceeds the switching threshold of this CMOS static CMOS. So, just say, just say the switching threshold for this one V T H switching threshold is say, say 1.5 volts. Then the value of voltage at x should be larger than so, V of x should be larger than 1.5 volts for out to 
b equals to 0. But what has happened is that x rather than going towards v d d and out therefore going to 0, your x only went up to v d d minus v t n. If your v t n is relatively large for certain reasons or other, uh, this uh, output voltage will not cross the switching threshold and as a result it will be lesser than that and this inverter static inverter will read it as 0 only and therefore, output will be still latched to 1. Right? And this is, the, this is the problem area which you which you you you, you, you are facing, and therefore, the pass transistor gate cannot be cascaded by connecting the output of the pass gate to gate input of the pass transistor. I'll explain to you what do you mean by that. Let us suppose now. Let us suppose now I have got two pass transistors connected in this manner. Right? Is it okay? So this is A. This is say B. This is B this is C and this is your out fine. So, what will happen is that if this is V D D here you are giving this one high. So, this is on this V D D appears here as V T V D D minus V T N of say this is M 1 of M 1 right and at this point it will appear as V D D minus V T N of M 1 minus V T N of M 2 which means that in a pass transistor logic if you cascade in this manner then uh, the signal as you mo move from primary input towards the output the signal level starts to fall down by one threshold voltage as you cross one transistor and in no way you are able to uh, you, you are able to restore it back to its original state until and unless you put a static inverter right and that too uh, I should ensure that the voltage level does not fall go above or below the switching threshold. Right, and therefore uh, this this type of cascading doesn't work in a in a pass transistor logic for large logic designs. This is one problem area which you which which people face. Another problem area is let me show you what will happen if this is connected as the as the gate something like this. This is we have already done right, and, and therefore when B is going high, this VDD will appear as VDD minus. Vtn, Vtn of what? Vtn of this transistor, say M1 of M1, and that is the voltage here, which is which is given here. Now, if this voltage does not exceed the threshold voltage of this tra second transistor, this will be switched off, and the output will be held to zero voltage, or whatever the original voltage was, right? So, what I wanted to point you out was that it is very difficult to cascade uh, two in uh, two pass transistor logics in a similar manner, and you need to sit restore the signal level by simply using a static inverter in between the two transistor level. Now, let me come to the voltage transfer characteristics of a pass transistor AND gate right. So, AND gate I have already discussed with you I have got A, B prime B and what I am now I am adding is I am adding this gate output or the gate obviously this gate is inverted by this uh, static inverter and I am feeding it at B prime and f equals to a equals to f it equals to a into b. Now you see, uh, suppose b equals to VDD, b equals to VDD, and a goes from zero to VDD, a goes from zero to VDD, right? So therefore, when input equals to zero, and as my input starts to increase, this goes on increasing, output goes on increasing, this output goes on increasing, right? And this is a linear, obviously rise will be to you, but beyond a particular V in right how much it will be V d d minus V t n you will see that, that it will be almost saturated and therefore, it will, this will be a saturated case. Why is it like that? Because when B when B equals to V d d this is switched on this is switched off of course, this is off right. So, A will appear at point x by degrading it by one threshold of the device right one threshold of the device. But whenever V d d is much smaller as compared to V t n my V out will follow, follow V in and therefore, this will be a straight line path available to you till a point where you reach V d d minus V t n. At such a point this device will enter into deep saturation and the voltage will be fixed at V d d minus V t n right and therefore, the voltage is fixed at V d d minus V t n. Similarly, let us look at the fact that suppose A was equals to V d d and B was equals to going from 0 to V d d b is this one right. So, it was initially 0 and now it is going from 0 to v d d and a has been fixed to v d d. 
So, when initially this was 0 right uh, this will be cut off this. So, this transistor will be cut off as this transistor is cut off this will be fully on and the output f will be equals to 0 and that is what you are getting hit here. So, whenever your v in is very very small output is also small it goes like this just at the point where your threshold voltage of the device is there you uh, when b goes above the threshold voltage of the device uh, this switches on right and then this switches off sorry uh, this switches on and this switches off yes off. So, it was initially on and this was so let me assume this to be as m 1 and this to be as m 2. So, in initially m 1 was off and m 2 was on and f was equals to 0. Now, what has happened m 1 is going to on state m 2 is off state and f is equals to a dot b which you see and therefore, you, you, you start following this curve in, in reality. So, this is the curve we follow. So, as you v in increases uh, v in increases. Uh, so, since, since v d d is already fixed I get v d d minus v t h curve till the point I get up to this much point right b goes from 0 to v d d. So, so, when the voltage starts so when the so your this is fixed b is varying from 0 to v d d when b is varying from 0 to v d d you do you, this this goes like this right and the reason is that this switches on this switches off and f a dot b comes into picture here right and that is quite critical or understanding it. So, you can see your v out in this case is already down by v t n as compared to the previous state is already down by quite a large quantity below v t n it is already so difference is there above v t n also there is no difference, but around this part you will have v t n difference between the two threshold voltage difference is there. So, this is the uh, so, 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 so as I discussed with you therefore, the pure pass transistor logic is not regenerative means the voltage once lost is gone you cannot regenerate it and a gradual signal degradation is observed uh, which can be remedied by the occasional insertion of a static CMOS inverter because inverter will either latch it to VDD and 0 and therefore, you have to insert VDD resulting in a larger power dissipation. Now, uh, typically uh, when you do a high, high performance design you use a differential pass transistor logic in which we assume that my inputs and its complements are available to me. So, A, A bar, B, B bar, C, C bar are all available to me and I do a pass transistor network here and then I put a static inverter to get a full swing in the output side. Now, the basic idea as I discussed with you is accept the input in both true and complementary form and produce a true and complementary output. So, the output will also be a true and complementary one well that is simple because you do have a static inverter here right. This is also re referred to as a uh, differential pass logic or even a complementary uh, pass logic here right. Uh, differential most common is the differential pass transistor logic or DPL or DPTL right and gives, gives you quite an interesting result as far as it is concerned. So, what is this pass transistor network it, the same thing which you just now studied that is you have got a b right and then comes like this and then the same thing which we have done. So, this is b prime this is b this is a and this is 0. So, f equals to a into b. So, this whole thing which you see is inserted in this black box right and I, I, I will term this as a differential uh, differential pass transistor uh, logic. With this knowledge or with this idea let me come to the next one that let me take up the properties of differential pass transistor logic and let us see how it works out. So, since both true and complementary inputs are required, uh, so extra circuitry is needed just to complement the signal. So, I require an extra static inverter to complement the signals. Uh, of course, XORs and adders can be realized using small transistors. One example is given here where XOR and XNOR are, uh, are, are designed. So, you can see here when A, I have got A, A bar, A bar, A right. So, when and this is if so, so if your A equals to 1 and b equals to 1 uh, then what will happen is that when a equals to 1 this is 1. So, your a bar will be equals to 0 and b bar will be equals to 0. So, this will be 0 means this will be cut off right and b will b, b equals to 1 meaning, meaning this will be on and therefore, a bar will appear in the output side here a bar and therefore, that is nothing but 0 right which means that when a and b are both equals to 1 I get 0 when both are 0 0 uh, sorry when a equals to 0 and b equals to 0. So, a equals to 0 and b equals to 0 implies that this is cut off now 
this one is cut off. So, with b equals to 0, with a equals to 0, what will happen is that uh, uh, when with, with a equals to 0, sorry. So, with a equals to 0, uh, what will happen is that this will be 0, of course, 0 and b prime will be 1. So, this will be switched on. So, I will have 0 coming into picture here and when b prime equals to 0, this will be cut off. So, b prime will be 1, this will be switched on and b will be equals to 0, this will be cut off and a, a bar will appear here. So, 1 will be appearing here. Right. So, if I want to find out x naught x or I will get this, if I want to find x naught I will get this into consideration. So, I can have an x or uh, x or x or uh, bar here right and uh, so we just need to perm permutate the inputs in a proper manner so that I get the proper output here right. Uh, however, as I discussed with you uh, there will be always a problem of signal degradation uh, between the pass transistor logic input and output and therefore, cascading this uh, across a large number of logic is a uh, uh, futile exercise because everywhere you will get one VTN drop and if that exceeds the, uh, the switching threshold of the static inverter, I will actually read 0 as 1 or 1 as 0 right and that is a quite an important uh, problem area which you will see. Now, as I discussed with you differential pass transistor logic suffers from the problem of static inverter. Uh, so power dissipation. Why, why power, dissip, uh, power dissipation? Because now you are directly allowing the output to see the input right and therefore, there will be a large current and therefore, this will result in a larger power dissipation. So, there are certain solutions uh, which is level restoration, multiple threshold and transmission gate. We will take each one of them and explain to you how it works out. Say for example, um, I have a level restorer means I want to restore the level at the input. So, this is my static inverter here just like an AND gate, I have A and I have B here and I have this is MN and X is the point this, this particular point and this is the output here. Now, you see when this is equals to 0 right, when this is 0, this will be 1 and therefore, MR will be equals to off, when this is off, uh, this will be again 0 because you have connected to the ground through this capacitance. Now, when X equals to 1, uh, sorry X equals to yes 1, this will be 0, this will be 0 means this will be switched on when this will be switched on this VDD will appear at this particular point and try to pull the value of voltage here above uh, VTN because if you see if this is A equals to 1 means A equals to VDD then my VX will be equals to VDD minus uh, VTN, VTN is the threshold voltage of MN. Now, this will switch on my transistor and as a result this will be 0, when this is 0 uh, this will switch on my MR, MR and this VDD will be connected to ground and the and the loss which you get through VTN will be made up by this VDD. But please understand the loss you will do is that at that particular instant of time when your MR is on you have a direct connection between VDD and ground and therefore, your short circuit power dissipation will be larger in such a case right and that is uh, uh, this is known as level restoration at the cost of a, a slightly higher power dissipation. You see uh, therefore, as the W by L ratio of the this is known as restoring transistor, this is referred to as a restoring transistor. So, as the aspect ratio is increased which means the W of the restoring transistor is increased, the voltage level at this particular point is not allowed to fall drastically. So, when you reduce your W it, it, it goes down to almost 0 but as you increase the value of W from 1 to 1.75 with L fixed as 0 0.25, uh, the voltage is actually latched to a value approximately 1.75 or 1 point, approximately 1.60 or something like this. So, you got the princ principally correct that, so why is it like that? Go back, go back to my previous module to appreciate this point that when your aspect ratio is large, you have made the device stronger, higher current is flowing through the device and therefore, the output voltage which this was trying to go to the ground is now pulled back is pulled up by the MR restoration transistor and therefore, you see this is what you get the profile which you get right and therefore, you are not able to get the peak to peak swing. Uh, uh, so, at the cost of that you are able to restore the internal level at node x. Let me come to multi threshold uh, voltages, uh, uh, what we do here is that we have so, so this is basically your two cross coupled inverters connected back to back right and I will get out and out bar and then this is complementary output NMOS pass transistor logic right. So, what we do is that uh, we try to make the threshold voltages of this one slightly larger as compared to the threshold voltage of the 
of the devices kept inside the complementary NMOS pass transistor logic. Once you initiate that or once you have that into consideration, you automatically are able to correlate or able to do some amount of correlation uh, between the output at this stage and the input and output at this stage right. So, so this is basically what we do is that we try to keep the complementary output module threshold voltages uh, much lower and we try to keep the threshold voltages of the cross coupled inverter much higher right. And what it does therefore, is that if it is much higher uh, they are more strong and therefore, the voltage of out and out bar are actually latched to its value and this cross coupled inverters try to stick to these values in a proper manner. Right. So, this is the advantage of having a multiple threshold uh, multiple threshold uh, transistors. Now, let me come to the uh, last part of the or a sort of a of this is transmission gate and transmission gate is very simple straightforward. You do have an NMOS here right you have an NMOS here for and a PMOS in connected back to back. This is driven by C and this is driven by C bar. So, whenever my C equals to 1 and by C bar therefore, equals to 0. I ensure that this is on right on and whenever C equals to 0 and C bar equals to 1, I will assume it to be off or it will be off also as in, in a sense. Because, uh, because you see when C equals to 1 this is NMOS on and C bar equals to 0 means this is PMOS is on. So, both the transistors are on and you have a direct connection between A and B. When C equals to 0 or C bar equals to 1 this is cut off and therefore, there is a high resistance between source and drain of this transistor and therefore, A and B are not disconnected with respect to each other right and therefore, they are connected in parallel and they are driven by two one clock uh, or one data input C and it is C bar it is complementary. This is the schematic which you see here. Remember why do we do a TG is very simple. Uh, remember that uh, PMOS was a good uh, uh, puller of 0 and NMOS was a good puller of uh, sorry NMOS is a good puller of 0 and PMOS was a good puller of 1 we have already seen that point. Now, if you therefore, if you combine the two together uh, two transistors together then both of them cancel each other's uh, domain assuming the threshold voltage is exactly equal and the whole transistor is able to pull the input node right till VDD right. So, it will be VDD. So, what you will get in the output side is something like this uh, you will get VDD minus VTN right and then and then you will subtract VTN. So, you will add VTN here and this cancels off and you get VDD in the output side. So, mod of you add mod of VTP. Now, if assuming that mod of VTP equals to mod of VTN these two gets cancelled off and I get again VDD in the output side right and that is a standard way of looking at it of a transmission gate. I will show you how I can implement this logic gate and let us see how it works out. Uh, I have this, this, this is basically a static inverter this part is static inverter static inverter. Let us suppose A equals to 1 and B equals to 1 and let us suppose S is also equals to 1 then S bar equals to 0. So, when S equals to 1 and S bar equals to 0 right my this point let us suppose this is x, x will be equals to. So, when S equals to 1 and S bar equals to 0 this is on right and this is off. If this is on then A will appear in the x fine. Similarly, if A equals to uh, 1 and B equals to 1 and S equals to 0 and S bar equals to 1 what will happen? S equals to 0 and S bar equals to 1 primarily again means that this will be on right S bar equals to 1 and S equals to 0 means B will be on and X will be equals to B fine and X will be equals to B. Is, is this conceptually clear right and there will be no drop in the voltage. In fact, there will be no switching of the voltage from VDD to VDD minus VTN it will still remain the same. Similarly, if A equals to 0 B equals to 0 let us suppose and S equals to 1 and S bar equals to 0 in that case what will happen? If S equals to 1 and S bar equals to 0 means this condition will be there and A and B are both equals to 0 implies that uh, uh, this will be switched on and therefore, X will be equals to equal to 0 right and therefore, I can get all sorts of logic principles here. Now, 0 will be obviously will made equals to 1 when you have A you have got A bar consider here. So, I can implement certain logic gates in this case. So, just tell me what this logic gate will be all about right you, you need to find out you yourself do it and need to find out. This is the layout on the right hand side is basically the layout of this logic gate. It is quite complex in nature because you are using multiple gates with multiple clock loading and that makes life difficult for us. Let me come to the performance of the transmission gate. So, so, remember transmission gate is made up of NMOS and PMOS 
this is n MOS and p MOS. So, you see R p which is the resistance of p MOS will be V d d minus V out by I d p where I d p is the current flowing through the device which is approximately equals to 1 by k p V d d minus mod of V t p and similarly R n is V d d minus V out upon k n minus V d d minus V out minus V t n into V d set assuming that both are in the, uh, in the in the saturation region right. So, you see uh, therefore, as the input voltage or, or the output voltage goes on increasing right the N MOS resistance goes, to, goes on increasing, the N MOS resistance goes on increasing and the reason is that this value of voltage goes on increasing means this whole thing starts to decrease as a result R n goes on increasing whereas, R p actually starts to decrease with V out going high and high and that is with see red, red, red curve. So, the overall curvature of R n parallel to R p because these two are parallel in dimension is something like this in the green curve was almost independent of the value of V out and that is one of the major advantages of a transmission gate that the transmission gate output or, 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 the, or the effective, uh, effective uh, resistance offered by a transmission gate is almost independent of the value of the uh, signal which you give right. Whereas, for all other cases it happens to be a strong function of the signal right and that makes my life easier as far as performance of the pass transistor logic is concerned. So, we have understood the pass transistor logic, we have also understood the complementary logic, uh, we have also understood the uh, PTC which is pass transistor logic as well as transmission gate logic. So, we, we for, for reduction in the transistor count we use pass transistor, for example, an AND gate would require uh, 4 transistors assuming the complement is also be also to be taken out for one of the signals, whereas when you use a AND gate for your CMOS transistor it takes 6 transistors into consideration. In a differential pass transistor I will assume both, uh, both true and its complementary inputs and both types of output true and its complementary output is formed. Uh, typically as I discussed with you when you do a pass transistor there will be a fall in the voltage uh, to, to remove that we use a level restoration circuit we can also use a multiple threshold circuits or we can use a transmission gate either of the three. Uh, the problem with these logic designs are that they, they might replace CMOS, but they are not as robust as your CMOS is. Uh, so, they are not too much preferred in your logic domain or in, in design domain right. Uh, in some cases we do use transmission gate based design, but then you are actually increasing the number of transistors in that case right and your clock load also starts to increase. With these words we have therefore, understood the basic difference between PTL pass transistor logic and transmission gate. We have also understood what is a uh, what is a pass transistor logic and how is it depending on the value of threshold voltage, what is the meaning of cascading of logics and uh, how can I remove the problem of a loss of signal using uh, using level restoration circuits right. With this we finish this module and we will come back in the next module with other explanations. Thank you. Mm -hmm.